How's it going, guys? Past level question, microbiology, step one. Before we start, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Give you a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram threads, Melman underscore medical, and HL man underscore medical. Links down below for me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group channel down below. And I start the clip. 39 year old man, two day history, high fever, and shows physical exam shows a two on six hole, stolid murmur at the left mid clavicular line. There's no radiation to the axilla. He smoked one half pack of cigarettes daily for 20 years. He drinks a pint of whiskey daily. He's enrolled in the methadone program. Blood cultures are drawn and shown below, which the following most likely affect the causal organism. Past level, as I said, so this agar plate, light microscopy, it's showing us, actually it wouldn't even be fucking light microscopy, you could just take a magnifying glass, hold it up to the agar plate. But the point is, it's showing us gram-positive cocci and clusters, which is staph aureus, buzzy, and it's also yellow in color. So you need to know golden staph, yellow coloration, that's high yield for staph aureus. And then of course, acute endocarditis, IV drug users, staph aureus, you just need to know in a vacuum is the most common organism. I didn't even need to show you uh, this culture result here. Okay, you should just know that it's a staph aureus and the methadone program. Okay, well, the methadone program is what tells you this is an IV drug user because methadone is used for heroin withdrawal, opioid withdrawal, right? And then some students will ask about the murmur. Well, it's mitral regurgitation. We have a holostolic murmur at the left midclavicular line. I was an asshole here, decided to write it doesn't radiate to axilla. I mean, because students get hyper fixated on exact locations, how murmurs present. US somebody doesn't give a fuck, they'll give you pretty much any location they want for certain things. Uh, so don't get uh, pigeonholed into how it's uh, murmur is supposed to present. <clears throat> Tangentially, I've even seen a TCK question where they gave mitral stenosis and told you, they explicated that there was no opening snap. Okay, there's usually an opening snap in mitral stenosis. So my point is just don't get hyper fixated on murmur descriptions. So what are we going to see for staph aureus, okay, as the answer choices here? Before I do that real quick, I should just mention tangentially that don't confuse this, staph aureus causing acute endocarditis in an IV drug user where there's no previously damaged valve with, don't confuse that with subacute endocarditis, which is going to be a patient who has a previous valve abnormality such as mitral valve prolapse, where he or she might have a dental procedure. Uh, where the strep viridens, okay, not staph aureus, strep viridens, which can be broken down into strep mitis, mutans, sanguis, sanguinis, and you can get limit dextrins, which are carbohydrates that allow for attachment to the valve, okay? So that's subacute endocarditis. Previously, abnormal valves, such as mitral valve prolapse, pe person has dental, patient has dental procedure versus acute endocarditis, no previously damaged valve, it's staph aureus, classically IV drug users. So let's just whip through the answers here for staph aureus. Choice say endotoxin, wrong fucking answer. So endotoxin is going to be gram negatives, all right? Well, staph aureus to gram positive cocci and clusters, all right? So endotoxin, characteristic of gram negatives. So you know instantaneously this is wrong. So let's just look at the other answer choices. Lipid A, lipopolysaccharide, both wrong fucking answers. So lipid A is a component of lipopolysaccharide. Holy shit. And the lipopolysaccharide is an endotoxin of gram negatives. So even if you don't know what the answer is immediately, A through C are fucking wrong because they're all the same thing, right? So you need to know that the lipid A component of LPS as the endotoxin in gram negatives will bind to CD14, just toll-like receptors on macrophages and cause the macrophage to release cytokines, causing septic shock, TNF-alpha, increased vascular permeability, vasodilatation, low blood pressure, IL-1, fever, exceedingly high yield, you know those two cytokines, Rio simile. Staph aureus, in contrast, it's got TSST toxin as one of its toxins, which can cause uh, toxic shock syndrome, obviously, and that's a super antigen, right? Where rather than binding CD14 toll-like receptors on macrophages, the TSST toxin is going to bridge MHC2 on the macrophage with T-cell receptor on the CD4 plus TH1 T-cell, causing the macrophage similarly to release cytokines, TNF-alpha, IL-1, namely. So it's a different mechanism from endotoxic shock. Okay, you need to know that, the super antigen. So staph aureus can do that with TSST toxin, and tangentially, strep pyogenes can cause a toxic shock like syndrome with exotoxin A. They ask that on the US simile. If you get a question, for example, where it's a cellulitis, erysipelas, impetigo, a skin infection, that could be either group A strep or staph aureus, you need to know the mechanism is the super antigen causing the shock, not an endotoxin. So you say, all right, well, A through C are wrong because we know it's not, uh, staph aureus isn't gram negative. It's not gonna have an endotoxin. So between D and E, well, okay, M protein is not produced by staph aureus. M protein is produced by strep pyogenes, group A strep. And this is actually the high yield 
uh, molecule involved in the pathogenesis of rheumatic heart disease. So the immune system type 2 hypersensitivity will form antibodies against the M protein and streptogenes will cross react with mitral valve, which is going to cause your mitral regurgitation early and then later in life it'll scar over become mitral stenosis. But that high yield molecular mimicry type 2 hypersensitivity mechanism for M protein streptogenes, high yield past level for us simile. so when you get this type of question the answer being choice e which it refers to protein a of staph aureus when you get this type of question you say well i've never fucking heard of spa in my entire life some of you have heard of protein a you didn't know it was also called spa but when you get this type of question which us simile will do occasionally you have to eliminate to get there that's what we do we say well we know it's not a through c it's not endotoxin we know they're wrong and then between D and E, which one's it going to be? Well, Staph aureus doesn't fucking produce M protein. That's streptogenes. I know that because rheumatic heart disease is super fucking high yield. And then we're left with the obscurity. I've told students, when you don't know an answer, don't choose weird sounding shit. And that applies basically 19 out of 20 times. But if you get a weird question such as this, the only way you're going to have a weird answer, quote unquote, is if you're 100% sure and you know A through D are fucking wrong and you're left with the... A more obscure one, but the uh, but protein A of Staph aureus, what it's going to do is bind to the FC region of IgG, which means that it it will cause the Fab fragments of uh, immunoglobulin to stick outward, externally facing from Staph aureus, preventing opsonization and any type of phagocytosis. Okay, so you just need to know Staph aureus produces something called protein A also known as SPA, and it binds the FC region of IgG. That's what you need to know, okay? And then as far as the value of this question, apart from that factoid, it's not that we're isolating that singular factoid and that's it. The value of this question is also knowing that it's grand-positive cocci and clusters, it's acute endocarditis, you get IV drug users, users, methadone's a way that they can insinuate that, you know it doesn't produce an endotoxin, you know that M protein is streptogenes, so there's a lot of high yield value points here. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content if you like my stuff. Subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.